YouTube. Today we are going to be unboxing 30 Harlequin Nocturne books that I just picked up uh, from eBay. I have not opened the box yet, so hopefully that's what we have in there. I wanted to read more werewolf books in preparation for Nano this year, and I was like, Harlequin Nocturne has some werewolf books, so yeah, let's buy a set of those and see what happens. Here we go. An open box. We don't know what's in here. Hopefully books. It's a 13 pound box, so it could be rocks. I don't know yet. And it's books. I have read none of these. Ever. Actually, I think I've read one Harlequin Nocturne book, and it was a werewolf book, and I don't remember which one it was, but Oh yeah, 13 pounds. Harlequin Silhouette Nocturne, 30 books. All right, so let's see what we have in here. First up, we have Last Wolf Hunting. Uh, I'm guessing this is a werewolf one. It is Jeremy and Jillian, who have not seen each other in over a decade. Star Class Love and Second Chances. So I'm guessing this is a werewolf one. So we'll add that to the werewolf pile. I know they have dragon books too. I don't know if I got any. Next up we have the Vampire's Kiss. I think this one might be Vampires. It is Olina is a CSI agent and there is an arrogant outsider from Interpol challenging her authority and it looks like the arrogant outsider from Interpol fights vampires, lichens, and witches. And Charlie, my helper, behind the camera is pushing on <laughs> the computer. So if the video is a little shaky, talk to him. Charlie, you want to come to the side and say hi? He does not. He just wants to dance on the table. So we can put this one in the vampire category. I'm going to keep track. Next up, we have The Seeker Time Raiders. So this is a thrilling new series of paranormal adventure, time travel, and passion through the ages. Delia Sebastian is a trained historian and psychic, and former army captain Jake Tyler is her swaggering ex-lover who can read her thoughts. This is awesome. Together, they will make the risky leap back to 44 BC to infiltrate the court of Julius Caesar by posing as Grecian mercenaries. But with assassins everywhere, will old passions reignite to undermine their cover, leaving them trapped in history forever? Okay, this might be the first one I read, because that sounds exciting. So this one is, um, I guess, time travel? Psychic? File it under time travel for now. And that might be the first one. Because, yeah, this is like historical paranormal, and that's my jam. All right, next up we have Vampire Vendetta by Alexis Morgan, and I know it's really dark in here. I'm so sorry, I have every light in the room on. I had to shut the curtains because my neighbor's house is bright white and it will literally blind you. So, this one is. As the lone survivor of his vampire clan, Seamus Fitzhugh lives only for revenge. He has a fun name. And now that he's infiltrated the compound of his enemy, his chance has come until he rescues a stunning hybrid from certain death. Megan Perez is a woman on the run from her own demons, and she's a distraction that could cost them both their lives. And so she's a hybrid... what? Half vampire? Half human? I... half demon? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, in the meantime, we will list this one under the... Why is this right in the middle? Oh, look, I can buy more books. <laughs> um, we will put this one in the vampire category for now, um, because we know he's a vampire. We just don't know what she is, but... Next up, we have Dark Truth by Lindsay McKenna. This one is Anna was spawned by the Dark Lord himself, but every instinct she possesses screams that she isn't evil, so this is like a daughter of Satan, I guess. And she is a shape-shifting jaguar. And her love interest is Mace Ridford. He is a trained assassin and warrior for the light. That's a nice conflict there. And I don't know 
Oh, he has a jaguar pattern on his skin. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, look, there's a jaguar right there. You can't really see it. It's dark. There it is. Um, I don't know what to categorize this one as. It is part of the Warriors for the Light series. Only those with the most special gifts can challenge the darkness. I guess we'll put it in its own category for now because it's kind of demon, kind of shifter. We'll put it in its own category for now. So far we have one werewolf, two vampires, one time travel historical that... Still gonna be the first one I read. Next up, we have The Enemy's Kiss, which this cover tells me nothing. I don't know what this is. Two different worlds collide. Sworn enemies must choose whether to kiss or kill in Xandria Manson's explosive new romance. So this is Nicholas Dracon, and oh, he turns to stone at daybreak, and I'm assuming he's a dragon. I hope he's a dragon. And he starts dating Catwoman, literally. Upon capturing the intoxicating cat burglar, he discovered she was desperate to save her own sister's life. So yeah, I hope she's a shifter, actually. It does not say. It doesn't say what he is. It just says he's cursed. I think this is going to have to go in its own category right now. But this is, um, this is the dragon and Catwoman romance. Okay, in case you were looking for something like that. Next, we have a two-for-one. It is The Wolf Siren by Karen Whitten and Demon Wolf by Bonnie Vanek. It's a big, hefty one, since there's two. These are both werewolves. The Wolf Siren has pack protector Kane McGraw, never gets involved with his victims, he says, but Lily Gideon may be the one exception. He helped free her from a religious cult, and she is still in danger from the people who had captured her. And then we have Demon Wolf which has Navy SEAL Commander Dale Curtis encounters the mysterious Kira Solomon, but he doesn't remember her, but his body does. So I guess this is sort of like werewolf, forgotten memories type deal. But yeah, it's two more werewolf ones. Unfortunately, we're only going to count it as one because it's in one book. Nice compact werewolf books for me. Next up, we have The Highwayman by Michelle Hoff. Michelle Hoff is the author of the one Harlequin Nocturne book I read before. Um, this is a Wicked Games miniseries, a match between cat and demon. So we've got cats again. Max Fitzroy, the legendary highwayman, has slain scores of demons with a razor-like whip and a burning need for revenge. He needs a witch's familiar to cure him of his immortality and his inability to feel sensual pleasures, it looks like. Okay, so yes, this is a Catwoman, literally, and a Demon Slayer. Uh, so this is Shifter. So I'm going to put it in... I'm going to put it in with that Warriors of Light series, because they're both Shifters. This one's hefty. So this next one is The Wolf Princess. It is almost the size of the double book. So this is exciting. It is part of the Pack series by... Karen Whitten. It is about Princess Alyssa who instantly senses trouble when she meets Brandon Straub, the mysterious specialist her parents summoned from America to stimulate her shape-shifting cycles. He is also a halfling, but she's a werewolf. It's the wolf princess. We can safely put this in the wolf category. Oh, this has an extra story in it. A reader favorite, one I open. That's why it's hefty. So there is technically two in here. Put that in the wolf. There are so many books in this box. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have Rain Tree Sanctuary by Beverly Barton. This is book three of a series. What are the odds that one and two are in here? Probably not very good. This is war with their arch rival. The evil and Sara clan is unavoidable. For Mercy Raintree, a war means she must assume her position as guardian of the sanctuary, the sacred Raintree home police place deep in the Smoky Mountains. But doing so threatens to disclose her most prized secret, one Mercy has kept to herself for six years. I don't know what category to put this in. Uh, it doesn't say what the love interest is other than he wants to wipe every rain tree from the face of the land, including Mercy, who he wants to... Oh, she has a... Oh, she has a daughter. Okay, is it his daughter? I still don't know what to put this as. So we're just gonna put it with the enemy's kiss and the... I don't know what this is pile. I see another Michelle Hoff book in here. 
is not the one I read. It is Kiss Me Deadly from Bewitching the Dark. I'm assuming this is a witch story. It is, nope, it is a vampire witch story. There is a death cocktail, is what the vampires call a witch's blood. It's poisonous. A drop will destroy a vampire within minutes. So this is vampire witch romance. Um, he's a vampire. He has tasted witch's blood, and I guess now he's addicted to it. He somehow survived. So now he wants to kill the witch that nearly killed him. And I'm going to assume things get a little heated instead based off the cover. It's saucy. It looks saucy. We will put this in vampire. Next up, ooh, we have a dragon one. Next up, we have one that's a little beat up. But it is Dragon's Curse. I heard there were dragon ones. I was hoping a dragon one would be in here. This is Dragon's Curse by Denise Lynn. Only the threat of losing her brother could force Ariel Johnson to break out of her predictable existence and into the stronghold of a changeling's ancestral estate, following him from a mystical island to a remote Appalachian resort. Have you ever been to the Appalachians? Okay. Uh, are we in Maine? They're, they're not they're not that remote unless we're like talking north Appalachia. Okay. I lived in Appalachia for a long time. But there's dragons in the Appalachian Mountains and it's hopefully exciting. It doesn't say she is anything, but he is definitely a dragon. Oh, she is in the pocket of a sorcerer who wants the dragon's family dead, so it's possible she's a witch herself. We'll have to find out. We will file this under dragon. Okay, what's next? Reach in the box and pick one. Uh, next we have A Warrior's Desire by Pamela Palmer. This is another former Navy SEAL. Charlie Rand embarks on the most dangerous mission of his career when he dives through a portal to rescue the only person who knows how to seal the gates between the Esri Fairyland and the world. So this is Navy SEAL, retired Navy SEAL, and a fairy have to team up and save humanity from the crystal mine of Assyria. Okay, so this one sounds like it could be pretty interesting. I do like the few fairy books that I have read. Um, that's not my biggest category, but sounds like it could be good. So we'll file that under fairy. And this is a wide variety here. I was expecting like a million werewolves and vampires and not much else. But I have seven different piles going on for categories right now. So, next up. Oh, see? Wolf. Uh, we have Phantom Wolf by Bonnie Vanek. Is this Ghost and Wolf? Because that would be fun. Nope, it is another Navy Seal. There's a lot of Navy Seals running around in these Harlequin Nocturne books, okay? I only have 30 of them, and we have run across three Navy SEALs so far. So, he is on a dangerous mission in Honduras when he is confronted with his fiery past in the form of Kelly Denon. Once their romance had been forbidden, forbidden because of class differences. What class differences? In, okay, I don't want to know. Uh, then a tragedy drove them apart, and he is back into her, and she is an enchantress. So I am going to put this under witches. Close enough. What's the wolf about? Is he a wolf? Is there a wolf? Are there no wolves in this book? Somebody tell me down below if there's any wolves in this book because that is going to change where I am reading it at. But we are going to put this under witches. Fairies. Witches. New category. This is wrong box. This is <laughs> AK Cowboy by Joanna Wayne, and it is a Harlequin intrigue. So it is one of the suspense books. I mean, I guess it's in my box, so I'm gonna have to read it at some point. But yeah, this is a little short western. This is going in its own category called I don't know why this is in my box of Harlequin Nocturne books. But there it is. I'll have to read it at some point and then decide what I'm going to do with it. In the meantime, let's go back to our werewolves and vampires and witches with 
Last Wolf Watching. This is a, a Blood Runners book three. I also have Blood Runners book two. So if we could find Blood Runners book one in this box, that would be absolutely perfect. But this is a sensual retelling of the classic Beauty and the Beast romance. But now he has to protect her from the Lycans who want her dead. So is he a werewolf? Are there just werewolves that want her dead? I don't care. It's a werewolf book and it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Next up, we have Eris to a Curse by Xandria Munson. This is a Hearts of Stone novel. Enter a world where legends take flight, where men of stone fight for the women they must possess, and desire takes no prisoners. He has a family curse that turns him to stone, I'm assuming. Oh, they're neighbors! Oh, oh, he's a gargoyle! Oh, cool! He is a gargoyle. Okay, so this one might jump up on my list. I'm going to put it in the miscellaneous pile. But I think I might have to read this one after the Julius Caesar. This is first. That will not change. But he is a gargoyle, and he has to protect her from who knows what. I mean, it could be anything. Turning into a gargoyle. Why do I always open these directly to the saucy scenes when I flip through them? I don't know. It's a talent. It's a talent I don't want. Next up, we have... I can't reach in my box. We're getting down to the bottom. There is a bottom to this box. So we have Zombie Moon. I was hoping for a zombie one. It is a sensuous, passionate story of two people searching for love and truth in a world where friend and foe are indistinguishable and werewolves await the moon. So Caleb Locke is a zombie killer and he was a legend. Samantha Wagner needs him to kill some zombies for her. And the reason why he is such a good zombie killer is because he is a werewolf. Okay, this one might be right after the Julius Caesar one. It might actually be first. Zombies and werewolves are two of the best things ever, and we just combine them into one short little read. This feels like a good October read, even though it doesn't feel like October. It is a humid, 84 degree day out there and I am not happy about that. We have to make it feel like spooky season and we might read this in October. Look for it when I do the month end recap. Next up we have one that is very beat up but it is the Half-Breed Vampire by Teresa Myers. It is Half-Breed Slade Donovan is fated to feel like an outsider among his clan until a mysterious woman arrives with the ability to unlock his secrets. And she is a game warden, which is an interesting enough job. And she has to hunt down a pack of rare wolves that are threatening her tribe. It's part of the Sons of Midnight series. It says that on the back. All right. And she does not know that he is a vampire. Oh, she's a wolf whisperer too? Aw, oh, man. I guess this is a vampire because the werewolves seem to be side plot. He's a vampire. I don't think she's a werewolf. It doesn't even say they're werewolves. It just says wolves. Next up, we have Captive of the Beast. It is a Knights of White Tail, which is different from Warriors for the Light, I'm assuming. This is an intoxicated blend of suspense, seduction, and sensuality. Two enemies must battle the forces of evil and their own forbidden desire. As a knight of white, the demon warrior Reinhardt has long struggled to keep the beast within him at bay, but his unyielding attraction to Dr. Laura Johnson, the dangerous woman he has sworn to protect, threatens to rip his soul apart. When Reinhardt discovers that she has paranormal abilities of her own, he must choose. Will he give in to his animal attraction? Probably. Or fulfill his duty to protect humanity from the rising army of evil. This feels like one of those demon books. I don't know why he's shirtless with the sword in this cover. I can see the bottom of the box. There is a devil in here. I mean, you know, when I'm paying like 20 cents a book, and it's a lot of books, you never know what you're going to get. It's kind of sad, because I could have had another dragon book. Next up is a bench cover. It is A Night Master by Susan Kennard. It is part of the Nightsiders series. In the Nightsiders miniseries, we delve into different worlds filled with lust and power. This is another war one. They are in the vampire city of Erebus, and she is an undercover agent who must pose as a blood slave to unearth the truth and keep the peace between vampires and humans. So this is obviously another vampire one. 
Up next, we have Lord of the Vampires by Gina Showalter. And this one is a blood sorcerer who vanquished the kingdom of Elden and to save their children, the queen scattered them to safety and the king filled them with vengeance. Only a magical timepiece connects the four royal heirs and time is running out out so we have a vampire who has become a sex slave there is another vampire nope she's not a vampire she is jane parker she is a human and she needs to help him recover his memory about being a royal vampire because you know when you're immortal things start to run together after five million years um so this one's another vampire one we got a lot of vampire ones more vampires than werewolves so far and i I already have True Blood. Okay, I don't need more vampires. I would like more werewolves. This is Daysider, which is a Nightsider novel. Okay, is this like a daywalker like Colin and what we do in the shadow? Okay, tensions between human and vampire factions are escalating. She is a seductive human operative on a mission to infiltrate an illegal vampire colony. He's a vampire and represents everything she loathes and all that she desires. Their attraction is scorching, immediate, okay, it's saucy. The world's last hope hinges on their ability to work together because I, I'm guessing there are daywalkers and they are sucking all the energy out of people. I'm going with that. Next we have Savage Redemption by Alexis Morgan. This is when gunfire erupts just outside the gates of the Ode estate. Chief of security is first on the scene. The half-vampire, half-human falls in love with the wounded victim immediately, and she is... He did not fall in love with her immediately. She ripped his heart out three years ago. Hopefully, literally, because that would be fun. One night of fierce passion had cost him his life, his job, and his heart. I really want that to be literally. She is in jeopardy and he has to save her blah 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 you know the story so this is another vampire one and my vampire stack is officially higher than my werewolf stack and there are okay there's books left next we have back to life by linda johnson uh, okay he's a swat officer she saves his life by using her valkyrie powers yes it's a Valkyrie one. Awesome. This one just bumped up my list a little. And it's going to be another one in its own category. I don't think they made a lot of Valkyrie ones. I'm not sure. I know they only made like 250 of these compared to the like thousands of the other imprints. It's a Valkyrie one. It's going to be pretty high up on the list. We might get to it in October. We might not. And when I finally read all of these, which is a lot, minus one. I will do a video reviewing them, saying how good they were, level of sauciness maybe. This one looks saucy. I'm just going to say that that cover's pretty saucy. Next we have Dark Sins and Desert Sands by Stephanie Draven. It is part of the Mythica series. This is Escaping a Hellish Syrian Prison. U.S. serviceman. Oh, he's not a Navy SEAL. He's just a serviceman. Davricus emerged with uncanny mind control powers and an eerie ability to morph into a mythical minotaur. And there is one psychologist who used to know him, but she doesn't remember him. And she is the only one who can prove that he is innocent of something. It doesn't even say... Oh, I guess whatever he was thrown in prison for in Syria is what she needs to prove his innocence. Uh, anyway, it is a minotaur, which means it is its own category again. So, since it's another less known, well, I shouldn't say less known legendary creature, but since there isn't that many of them, I'm going to put this with the Valkyrie. Next up, we have Alaskan Wolf. Finally, a werewolf book. It's what I bought these for. Um, this is a, a naturalist. Maria Garvey travels to the remote Alaska glacier region. Uh, yes, we know Alaska is beautiful. Patrick is a works at the Great Glacier Dog Ranch, but he is really part of Alpha Force, which I'm assuming is like the Navy SEALs of werewolves because that seems to be a trend. Navy SEALs. They like soldiers. <laughs> Alpha Force. Military men with top secret abilities. See, I just had to continue reading on the back. And apparently it's its own miniseries, I'm guessing, um, because it's down here. I don't think I have any other ones, but there are a lot of military men in here. But this is Alaskan Wolf, Werewolf, 
Thank you. Finally. Next up, we have Dark Wolf Rising. All the werewolf ones were clearly at the bottom of the box, which means they got a little, um, a little bent because they were like this. And the other books were on top of them. Okay, I paid 20 cents a book for these. Anyway, this is Eric Northman. I'm sorry, Eric Drake, a powerful dark wolf, has never trusted himself around human females, preferring to mate only within his pack until he encounters Chelsea Smart. You know, these would be sexier if these werewolves, like, mated for life. I'm just saying. There's too many of these alpha males sleeping around going on. And then they find their one true love and they stop. Yeah, there's something sexy about wolves mating for life. I wish more people would go with that. Anyway, she knows about werewolves because her sister is being held by a pack of vicious lichens, and Eric heroically leaps into action. Now Chelsea will risk everything, her body and soul, to surrender to the passion that will mark her as Eric's woman for all eternity, so they do mate for life. Another werewolf one. Next up, we have it is science resurrection by patricia michelle it is book one it's a book one of something uh it's not a book one of what i needed the book one of this is everyone believed vampires were extinct this is ariel swanson i think i saw something about her in one of the other books i'm wrong there was just another Ariel. She wrote a novel about vampires because she wanted to get rid of her own fear of vampires. So she wrote it and it brought the vampires to her attention and he is trying to fall a follow a prophecy that Ariel accidentally used as the basis of her novel and she learns to well they both learn to get over their prejudices and have saucy 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 interactions i have too many vampire books okay that's, that's all i have next is sentinels a jaguar knight so we have another jaguar shifter this is a world where a sleek dark jaguar wanders after twilight seeking his mate it's saucy powerful and passionate protectors of the land equals sauce it is set in the southwest and he is a jaguar he is a rancher whose mother died protecting a magical manuscript that the sentinel's dark counterparts would now do anything to recover sounds like her mother might have been into a little naughty dark magic herself so we will just add this to the do i have a generic shifter pile i do not i'm just gonna put it with the demon ones because that's where the other jaguar shifter was next up we have another one of the science books it is book two insurrection detective caitlin mckinney responds to a call about a strange burned body that she discovers something far more complicated and dangerous she discovers a werewolf oh thanks it's not a vampire book uh landon rourke is a werewolf exiled from his pack and dedicated to keeping a protective watch over caitlin a prophecy said that his kind of vampires would one day come to a truce, so I guess it is vampires and werewolves. It's building off of this one when she brought vampires back, and then people found out that there are werewolves too. So yeah, it's Underworld the Saucy version. There's only two more! Oh, that's sad. And I'm surprised. The one that I had read in the past by Michelle Hoff is not in this box. Werewolves again. This is The Shifter's Choice by Jenna Kernan and Sentinels Alpha Rising by Dorana Durgan. So The Shifter's Choice is about... Oh, okay. So she is the service member in this one. Oh, thank goodness. But this is The Shifter's Choice. It is Private Sophia Tuma never risks distraction from her duty until she has to help a disabled veteran. And then we have Sentinels Alpha Rising. Uh, Holly Falks has spent her life hiding from the Sentinels. Now she's their prisoner. Uh, sexy alpha wolf Lanny Stewart wants to initiate her into their world. And he senses Holly's untapped power as also a werewolf, I'm thinking. It doesn't say. I, I just want more werewolves. And finally, uh, last but not least, because it's a werewolf book, we have Moon Rising by Lori Devoti. This is a, oh, it's a vampire and werewolf. We're listing it as werewolf. There is a lost treasure in perils the fragile peace between the vampire and werewolf populations. This 
The back of this looks like some of the other ones. I wonder if they're all part of the same, like, mini-series. It doesn't say. This was number 176. Oh, oh, they're numbered. They are numbered, and they have when they came out on the side. This was number 176 of the imprint. Lost Treasure, Fragile Peace, Vampire Werewolves, and they arrive at the site to claim the treasure for themselves, and then things get saucy. Anyway, things get saucy. That is the plot of all these books. And that is 30... Okay, that is 28 Harlequin Nocturne books unboxed. The final count for the 28 books remaining. We have two that were the strange... I wouldn't say strange. The one with the Valkyrie, the other one with the Minotaur. They're not the typical werewolf, vampire, fairy, witch, bear. We have these two. We have one. Why was this in its own category again? I don't remember because I could not figure out what it was. I could not figure out what it was. I think it was witch. No, she's an enchantress? Yes, she's an enchantress. We have one enchantress. We have one fairy. We only have one dragon and it makes me sad. Did anybody see the one where Guinevere goes and has saucy adventures with the dragon? Three things that I could not figure out what they were at all. Family curse. Family curse. Oh, nope. This is the possible dragon and cat burglar. Cat shifter. And this is the rain tree. Maybe it's fairies. I don't know. We'll find out when we read it. We have... Three demons and one jaguar, which got put in this pile because this this one, this one is also a jaguar. We have one time traveler book. I'm so sad. This is a historical paranormal, and those are like my favorite thing in the world. And I have one, and I'm I'm still gonna read this one first, followed by the one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine vampire novels. It's okay. And we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to call it 12 werewolf books because. Two of them are double books, and both books are werewolves, so I'm gonna, I'm counting these as four. And that is it. That is my lot of 30, sorry, 28 Harlequin Nocturne books from eBay. Let me know down below if you would like me to do a saucy rating after I finish the book, and let, we'll see how many of these make it on to my October review list. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today and happy reading everyone.